We're going to move on, though, to our final game we're going to talk about for this week, the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Oklahoma Sooners. Sean, I'm going to kick it off to you first. It's plain and simple. Must win for the Sooners? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, if you if you go out and beat Ohio State, it kind of it doesn't take away the sting of the Houston loss, but it definitely kind of says, well, you well, know, it saves your season. Yeah, it, it's it's well, we beat you know a top team in the Big Five in a, a top five conference here, mm-hmm. a Power Five conference, and we basically beat you know the best team in the Big Ten. It's kind of up to, for debate, but if we go out and and beat the best team in in the Big Ten, that kind of takes away a little bit of that sting. It helps you get motivated. It helps you look better to these cow. To uh, in the college football uh, play, playoff polls, so I think I think that I think that if Oklahoma wins this, it's going to be a huge push for this program, especially going forward. You need this win to me because of one thing and one thing alone. You don't have a conference championship, and also in college football too. I mean, that doesn't really play into the the uh, conference championship game because it's not a conference game. But with with this, is I think every game technically is a, is a must win because if you go mm-hmm. undefe- undefeated, you're be guaranteed well, a spot it's, here. It's not as bad when it used to be the BCS. You lose one game, you're gone. Yeah. Unless but, it's like everybody lost, then it became a crap shoot for who's getting in. The reason why I say because they don't have a title game is because what if at the end with the Big 12, and this is the only conference where this can happen, SEC, Pac-12, Big 10, and ACC all have that defining game. You versus you, winner comes out, sole possession of that title trophy. Big 12, you could have teams tied, and it's like, oh, you guys are co-champions. We've already seen in the past that the committee, and the committee could come out in, what, six weeks now and fucking change everything. Ah, Mm -hmm. we're going on total points this year. That's our criteria. Last year was conference championships, so that's what I'm going off of. You, you, because you know the nature of your conference for this season, you have to be able to say, you know what, there's a possibility that we need to win this game so that we can show the committee that we are worthy. What do you think, Brandon? Well, what I think is, is I think that uh, for Oklahoma, they, they need to be able to find a rhythm early and keep it. And I think that's one thing that they struggled with against Houston is the fact that I mean, it, it was the defense uh, of Houston, I think, but they it was couldn't, also that special teams they, they play. couldn't find they couldn't find a rhythm, mm-hmm. and and then they couldn't gain momentum. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a good thing would happen, a horrible thing would happen, a good thing would happen, a horrible thing would happen. You know, they couldn't get in that rhythm. They couldn't find a good momentum with that. And I think coming in against this Ohio State team, that's what they're going to have to fight to do. On the side of Ohio State, JT Barrett is the guy. They don't have to worry about, is there another guy sitting on the bench that's going to come in? No, there's not. It's JT Barrett. The and other it's, two and are in the NFL now. And it's, his, and it's his time to be able to take this team to the next level. And I think if he can beat Oklahoma after a game against um, Bowling Green and then Tulsa, mm-hmm. I, I think that you can say, wow, this Ohio State team – they're good. I mean, they beat the teams they were supposed to be. They they beat a well. If they beat Oklahoma, would be a team they were supposed to beat too, mm-hmm. technically. But it would be a team that they go, okay, well, you know what? They beat two of these eh teams, and then they beat this eh team. So that's kind of how I think you got to look at it. For for can you Ohio- do that? Can you do that for me again? Eh, what kind of a team? Because <laughs> they're Oklahoma right now. They're not an eh, but they're not an ah. They're kind of a. Uh, but but also Oklahoma is <laughs> probably the favorite in the Big Twelve. Uh, so I mean, if if they also go out, they and, were until Texas played. Well, yeah, but but now I, they're okay. You know, because Oklahoma State lost too. They lost to the Chippewas, so I don't really know if you could count them as a favorite anymore. If Oklahoma does go out and, and win the Big Twelve and or co champions of the Big Twelve, whatever whatever it ends mm-hmm. up, Ohio State can say. We beat the co-champion of a Power Five team. Yeah, we went out and beat Oklahoma. I think this is. I think this is a huge game for Ohio State, probably more than Oklahoma, because I think it's going to be. Well, I, I, I'll flip that actually, because Oklahoma needs this win if they do want to stay in college football playoff contention. And, and Ohio State can still say we lost to a ranked opponent, but still, I think. I think Ohio State. If they get this win, it's going to put them ahead of so many other teams here because, you know, Clemson's fallen off here. They beat two mm-hmm. teams, but they should have beat those teams by a lot more points than they did. Well, it's like the question I asked you, Sean, during the last segment was, will we see a two-loss team possibly make the playoffs? My answer would be, yeah, I could see it, except for Oklahoma. Oklahoma or anyone from the Big 12, 
I can't see it. If they look good in the Big 12. If if they go out and look phenomenal in the Big 12. If they 12 win every single and, game, but are they going to win every single game? And, well, if they, they make up a three-loss team. It all goes <laughs> into that co-champion thing. If they get co-champion, they're done. Yeah, but... They're I, done out of the water. Then you will get a big... Like, you'll either get a big... Like, Big 10 will then get in, SEC, and then will get in. Then maybe, like, it opens the door, like... Because you brought up Clemson, maybe them struggling, and even if they win the ACC, maybe Notre Dame can get Houston in. Then too. a Pac-12, Houston, Houston, it can definitely be in there. I think this college football playoff race is a. It's still wide open. B. It's not going to get any more closed until we get to the last week. The, these next three games for Oklahoma are going to be the true test of their season. If they go out and beat Ohio State, go out and beat TCU, who was who was previously ranked, and on that's the kind road. of their, yeah, it's on, on the, the road. road. And then they go out and beat Texas in the Red River Red River rivalry. That's mm-hmm. going to be that's going to give them so much momentum. And then they go and get a, get a break there with Kansas State, Texas Tech, and and Kansas and and uh, Iowa State. So I mean, they, if these are going to be the big three games, especially I mean, outside of a bowl game, if they do when they do go go to one, this is going to be the next big key three three stretches for them. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's like I've said with the Big Twelve, it's all about like. It's the hindrance, and I know some people may be saying, well, Ricky, it hasn't happened, so don't harp on it, but they're the only conference that can have a co-champion, which I think might happen this year, and it could hurt in Oklahoma if it does happen. But let's end this. Sean, we'll start with you like we did for the other three. Who you got? I will take Ohio State. I think Ohio State is the second-best team in college football right now. I think that Michigan might be able to to take that sp- uh, step up if they're able to beat uh, Ohio State or at least be able to take the, the Big Ten title uh, away from Ohio State. But I think that Ohio State is the second-best team in college football. I think they're going to prove that because the uh, o- Oklahoma will not be able to create a balanced attack against Ohio State, and I think JP- JT Barrett will be able to step up big for Ohio State. Oklahoma loses a huge wide receiver in Sterling Shepard who caught his first NFL touchdown this past weekend against the Dallas Cowboys, or some would call the Ezekiel Elliotts. I, I think that... Who's from Ohio State? Of Def- course. Definitely not the Dak Prescotts. Uh, you would definitely not call him that. But a, a guy to look for is Mark Andrews, who has kind of stepped in to take mm-hmm. the role that Sterling Shepard was in. I think that he is going to provide a, a key, deep presence for Baker Mayfield. I think Mayfield helps the team get back on track. Oklahoma in this one in an upset because I also think that the the offensive line will be able to go and have some success uh, some su- success and some success. I don't know what that is, but they'll have some of it. It's a great movie. And I it, Sixth Is that sense. actually a movie? Yeah, the Sixth Sense. The Sixth oh, Sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Bruce Willis. He can see dead. Yeah, people. no, I thought you said. Yeah. I thought it was a different word. Some with a little kid, sense. he can see dead people. Yeah, spoilers. I, I think that they'll be able to to go up against what I think is an inexperienced defensive front for Oklahoma. Excuse me, for Ohio State. So I think that Oklahoma will be able to get the win in this one. It's not going to be easy, but they are going to be able to just pull away at the end to get the victory, it's probably anywhere within three to seven points. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Sean. I think that Urban Meyer's the better coach in this one. JT Barrett's the more, I'm going to say, explosive quarterback. Going to go with Ohio State. I think it's going to be a big game. This is the nail in the Sooner coffin. End of the season. You're not making the playoffs all because of this game. I think the four other games we talked about in Notre Dame, that, that's going to be a close game. Alabama, I think that one's going to be a close game because I, I don't think Chad Kelly's going to turn the ball over too much. I think even the Florida State-Louisville game will be close. I think if mm-hmm. anyone's going to be a blowout, I think it's going to be Ohio State-Oklahoma. I think I think that Ohio State will want to make a statement and, and kind of put Oklahoma down. Okay, and we're going to end the podcast. You guys let us know what you guys think. But to end the entire podcast, we usually do – Brandon Swanson's final thoughts or final minute. Is that what we've been calling it? Final thoughts or final minutes, whatever it is. Whatever you call it. However, before we do that, I got one rant I got to get in there because I didn't let him do it at the beginning. Your Huskies. It is my Huskies. And I want to I want to preface it by if you want to check out what uh, Top 25 I'm talking about, head over to themostvaluepodcast.com. And if you want to check out what Sean's looking at right now on his computer, it's custom-made t-shirts. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to make a, a North Dakota sweatshirt because I used to own one. It was very comfy. And I want to make another one. Anyways. Get this one's going to be South Dakota. Nope. And be, then the next one will be East Dakota. Well, and the final be, one will be West Dakota. He'll have covered all of his It's going to be North Dakota State. Bases. And it's got to say once on the back. It's going to say North Dakota because it's about their hockey program who... 
brought out Jonathan Taze, Zach Was Brise. Wentz on the back? No, because he went to <laughs> University of North Dakota State. Jonathan, Jonathan Wentz. Anyways. Jonathan Wentz. I know he did go to North Dakota. Anyways, it's a hockey one. Yeah. Anyways, let's get into what I'm talking about. Top 25 here. For some reason here, Brandon and Mark ranked Clemson at five. Clemson, a team that almost lost to fucking Troy, Brandon, is five, and apparently better than teams like the Washington Huskies, who have dominated terrible teams, but they have still dominated terrible teams. Wisconsin, who beat LSU, and, I mean, LSU is still ranked in our rankings here, so I have no idea why that would make Wisconsin not better than Clemson, who almost lost to fucking Troy. For some reason Did here... Did they lose, though? They didn't lose, but Thank they you. almost lost to fucking Troy here, Brandon. It wasn't a, it wasn't like a blowout here. It wasn't like they won by 14. I'm saying that one's close. It was 30-24, and they had multiple chances to pull away. For some reason, that kind of makes me worry about a Clemson team that did not lose that much, except for Lawson and Dodd on the defensive side. That makes me worry a lot about this team here. And I know you know you got to base a little bit off of what you saw last year, but what I'm seeing right now, it's worrisome for Clemson. And a team like Washington, who's gone out and blow, blown out teams with Wisconsin, who beat LSU and then beat Akron and blew them out. Louisville as well. I know Louisville wasn't playing the best competition, but still blowing out teams. Texas has a t- win over Notre Dame here. I think that is a little bit more precedence than Clemson almost losing to fucking Troy. Can I tell you something really quick, yeah, though? Go ahead. Is that, that, is that they almost for, lost to Auburn, too. It, last last play it came down to. Is that for me, when I when I take a look at, at, at teams, when, when I'm doing my own personal rankings that we do here at MVP is I, I, I do try and take into effect the, the teams that, that people are playing. And I, I, I really find it very hard sometimes to rank a team too high against teams that, yeah, you're supposed to beat them by 50. So that's what I'm kind of looking at. Yes, Clemson did struggle and has struggled this season. But I don't think that there's any reason to bounce some teams over them that haven't really done anything other than whoop teams by 50 points when they were supposed to. So that's where I come from. You know, if Clemson has a, another struggle this week or in the next couple of weeks and some of these other teams don't and they and they continue to to win by the amounts that they're winning by, then yes, that's going to make that's how I do it personally. And at least how I've started and that's how I started out this season. But I'm not saying that in a week, two weeks, three weeks that Clemson hasn't fallen, those teams haven't jumped them. It all depends on how they're playing. I think preseason and who? I think preseason rankings kind of take too much we take too much of preseason rankings into effect here because you know we, we can see what they did last year, but that again isn't the same team. It's a, a whole different season here. I think that what we see put out on the field means more in the first two weeks. And what I've seen from Clemson has not been good. I know what they can do, and that's why they're dropping to me, is because they have not proven that they can still be the same team that made it to the national championship game last year. I think that takes a lot into stock here because Washington, they're a young and upcoming team, but they're still blowing out teams. Wisconsin, I'll make more of a a fight for Wisconsin. I'm a Husky fan, but Wisconsin beat LSU. It was at home. Well, it was on neutral field, but basically at home. It was at Lambeau. And they went out and beat Akron. I know that's not a big win there, but they still beat them, and they still put them down, and, and they still beat LSU pretty convincingly. I still think that, that that holds more warrant over a team in Clemson who should be great, should be fantastic. It was fantastic last year, but then again, that was last year, and they're showing a lot of struggles here. That's very worrying me that they couldn't close out a game against Troy. And now Brandon's final thoughts, or is that good enough for your final thoughts? No, I want I want to see his final thoughts because this looks pretty <laughs> promising. No, so uh, final thoughts. Y- you know, we we saw our first NFL season of the year this this past weekend, week one, and the Detroit Lions were without Calvin Johnson. They will be forever, Megatron, because he has hung up the football cleats to put on the dance shoes. Dancing with the Stars 2016, Calvin Johnson debuted on the dance floor, and they are now calling him after his performance, not Megatron, but cha cha because he got out there and cha cha his his way around the dance floor with Lindsay Arnold, who looks like a beautiful woman, and he is a lucky son of a bitch. But I, I think That's that code for Brandon saying, hey, give me your number. I want to Here's mine. I want never gonna happen. I want to see what I want to see what people think about Calvin Johnson's first first trip on the dance floor because he got a 26 out of 40 from the judges that put him in the top six out of 12 stars. I heard, so Calvin I heard Johnson, also... and, and really quickly, Ricky, seeing his face and that smile 
<laughs> That's probably the first time he smiled in the last six years. I also heard that people ran onto the uh, dance floor to protest Ryan, Ryan Lochte. Lochte. Yes. I think that, real quick, I think that Cha Cha Tron should give the Lions a loss this year just because that is a terrible nickname. I think that's probably worse than we're beating gonna, the, we're the Colts. We're going to penalize the Lions. For I, I think so. I think they deserve something. Also, I, I also heard in the, in the Ryan Lochte thing that people went out, stormed the dance floor to pretend to rob him and then say that they actually did. It was videotaped. Yeah. They pretended to steal things from him. They do broadcast this on ABC. They pretended to steal things from him so he could say that someone had taken something from him and actually have it happen. <sighs> Sometimes I just don't understand people. I don't get the reference. Do. <laughs> you don't get the reference? It was a joke. I'll explain it to you some other time, but that's going to do it for Maybe the Maybe when you're older. Podcast. Yeah, when you're not 10, as Brandon would call you. <laughs> but that's going to do it for the Primetime Podcast. I want to thank Sean Anderson for making his Primetime Podcast debut. Thank you guys for having me on. It was fun. And yeah, can... thanks for coming on. It was a really good time. You're welcome back anytime you want, unless, of course, we don't want you here that week. But uh, anytime <laughs> you want, though. Thanks, Brandon. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate that sentiment. <laughs> you uh, bet, buddy. But that's going to do it for the Primetime Podcast. Let us know down below what you guys think about anything we talked today. You can hit us up on Twitter. Those are in the description go check out most valuable podcasts on twitter instagram snapchat and on patreon at patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast so we can do more things for you maybe even some video podcasts in the future thank you guys one more time for checking out this podcast can't wait to see you guys after week three but as always have a good day everybody thank you for listening to this mvp podcast follow us on twitter at most valuable pod for more great podcasts